OK, professional footballers are used to playing in front of thousands of adoring fans in stadiums around the world. But what happens, of course, when the fame and glory comes to an end? Former Liverpool, Leicester and England player Emil Heskey is hoping to help current and former stars adjust to life after the beautiful game. And Emil joins us now. Um, a very good morning to you. It's good to see you, um, Emil Heskey. Do you want to just reflect on England's defeat uh, to Denmark last night? Yeah, it was disappointing. Um, you know, the lads have done very well up to now, and uh, but they regroup and they go again. Yeah, and regroup and, and go again, I suppose, is sort of it, the whole spirit of this project that you're launching, isn't it? Because we were talking to Nicholas Bentner a little bit earlier on in the week and Jamie Redknapp as well, former footballers at the top of the game who sort of thrived on the adrenaline of playing and... And, of course, in Nicholas Bentner's case, very honest about uh, how that leads you to lots of women, how that leads you to uh, gambling. But then when it all stops, I can imagine it is an incredibly hard transition to finding a life after football. So you have launched an initiative to, to help ease that transition. Have you seen those stories yourself and been concerned about them? Yeah, you, you, you hear about them all the time. Um, with myself, I left football and uh, really didn't know where I was going, what I was doing. Um, I, did a bit, I, I did a bit of media at the time, didn't know whether I wanted to be a coach, didn't really have the, the pathway into, with anyone to really talk to about it. Um, I was lucky enough that Stillian Petrov, who's a very close friend of mine, was talking to me about... Uh, about uh, a course that he was doing with UEFA. So UEFA do some great stuff. The PFA do some great stuff as well. And he encouraged me to go on that. And this is where this was born, really, um, with, with the likes of myself, uh, Gareth Farrelly, Michael Johnson, Stylian Petrov, Gaisca Mendieta, Pedro, Pint uh, Pedro Pinto and uh, Neil Meredith. So it's called... And who are you asking for help and support from and where do you want you where do you want the support for this project to come from because uh, of course footballers um are very much loved hugely respected mm. but also inspire quite a lot of jealousy don't they and i wonder if people you know especially in the situation we have at the moment trying to make ends meet will be thinking how in a minute if footballers have blown all their money not plan for the future um, where is the sympathy going to come from for them no, to kind I of have a future? We're, yeah. we're, we're helping them. We're, we're, we have come together to, to advise them, to, to encourage them to go into, into um, education early. We're, we're encouraging, encouraging them to take up, uh, whether it be coaching. Um, I, finished, I finished training and I'm on my coaching badges now. Finish uh, playing, sorry, and I'm on my coaching badges now, which I could have possibly done before I was 25. So we're encouraging them to do mm. do so, giving them and guidance. We're, yes, and we're uh, we're helping them in that in that um, in that pathway as well, in that transition from whether it be playing into into media, whether it be playing into coaching, whether it be playing into anything else that yeah. you're doing within within sport or football or within business. Um, we're 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 guiding them with that. Um, Emil, what do you make of the current impasse between football and the government over allowing fans back into stadiums? Earlier this week, there was an event where Arsene Wenger was being celebrated by a lot of his fans, a 1,000 people in the London Palladium, indoors, chanting his name. But apparently, fans cannot go back into outdoor stadiums uh, and chant for their teams because it is too dangerous, despite a number of pilots which uh, have shown that there haven't been any infections. What is it like, do you think, for the players playing without fans in the stadiums? I think not just for the players, for the fans being able to get in there and, and enjoy watching a game of football again, something that they've, they've loved for years, something that they, they, they cherish. They would love watching their team and, cheer, and, and cheering them on. It's, it's important to try and get the fans back in in a safe manner. I don't think it's, I, uh, from what I'm hearing, I don't think it's anything to do with the actual stadium. I think it's the, it's, it's the getting to and from. Mm. I think they're more worried about that than at the actual stadiums um, because, again, this, the, the, the project return, um, the, the, the football clubs up and down the country did a wonderful job in um, preparing for fans and making sure it's a very, very, very safe environment for fans to get back in to the stadium and have the experience of watching their team again.
Yeah. So I don't think it's the actual stadium. I think it's other other places. No, I think it's probably timing, isn't it? At the moment, more restrictions are coming in, so it perhaps wouldn't be a good look to let fans get back into stadiums. But my goodness, it's having a massive financial effect, isn't it, on the on the football pyramid? Yeah, I think it's more obviously at the, at the bottom end of the pyramid where you could possibly see some uh, um, some teams folding a little bit. Um, it, it, it's, it's dangerous. It's, 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 these are the teams that are actually feeding a lot of the higher clubs. Yes. Um, so they're actually you need them smaller clubs because again they 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 feed communities. They feed they feed the bot the top end of the pyramid. If you look at um, a, a lot of the the England players. A lot of them started off in League One, so uh, and then when you look a bit further down, that's where they're getting their players from as well. So it's it's it's, it's not looking great. No, and of course you're looking to offer support and guidance and a future to other support other footballers um, for their future. But very often footballers themselves and people involved in football are seen as heroes and people to look to for guidance. And we're joined this morning, aren't we, by one who did just that. Yes, in fact, Emil, um, he was sent a letter by uh, the Liverpool manager, Jurgen Klopp. Um, Jurgen Klopp is quite a, an inspiring character, isn't he, for many people? Yeah, he is. He's, uh, not just for the for the football club, for the whole of the whole of the world, really. When you when you see someone like that who's who has that so so much charisma and so much guile, and um, he inspires not just the people around him, but everyone in the world. Yeah. And he inspired this 11-year-old Liverpool fan, Lewis Balf. Uh, Emil, thanks so much for joining us. We're going to talk to uh, this little boy now. He sent this letter to Jurgen Klopp about his anxieties ahead of starting secondary school. Oh, and unbelievably, and I'm sure it thrilled him to bits, Lewis got the reply. Shall we have a look at what Jurgen Klopp wrote? He said, can I start by telling you a secret? I get nervous. To be totally honest, I'd be worried if I did not get nervous because when it happens, it gives me the chance to turn that energy into something positive. I know it might be strange for a boy of your age to think that the Liverpool manager can feel the way you do, but I do. From your letter, it's clear that you're very thoughtful and also very caring, and when you have these qualities, it's very hard to avoid getting nervous. Well, as you saw there, Lewis and his mum, Elena, Join us now. Lovely to see both of you this morning. Um, should we go for the beginning? What prompted you to write the letter in the first place? Why did you think of writing to Jurgen Klopp? Um, so when I was uh, in the summer, I was at my uh, uncle's house and he said, oh, why not write a letter to Jurgen Klopp because I was uh, nervous about starting a new school. So then uh, I said, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So I uh, wrote to Jurgen Klopp and I didn't think he was going to get back because it took like eight to ten weeks mm. to get back. But then uh, he did. And what so, was it like when you received the letter back? Oh, it was, re it was really cool because it was on a school day. So when I came back from school, uh, there was this letter on the side that said my name on. And I was like... Oh, I don't n normally get uh, any letters. So then I opened it and it was from Liverpool. So uh, it was really, really amazing, yeah. And it, was it helpful? Have you managed to do what he said and turn those nerves into a positive energy? Uh, yeah, um, it's really helped because I was uh, nervous about me uh, like meeting other people, mm -hmm. meeting the teachers. And the school uh, I go to looked really big. And then he just gave me tips for um, advice to not get worried and it really helped. Milena, when your son uh, wrote to the Liverpool manager, there must have been part of you that thought, hmm, I wonder if we'll, we'll ever get a response. Um, did Lewis keep asking about whether Jürgen would actually write back? And, and what did you keep him going with? Yeah, no, he did. He kept asking if um, it, if he'd get a reply. Um, initially, it was, I think, when Liverpool were doing their pre-season um, friendlies in Austria. So um, I kind of said, well, he's away at the moment, so he probably um, w wouldn't have seen your letter. And to be honest, I didn't think, I thought he might just get a standard reply or a signed photo or just something back. But 
um, yeah, we we've, we've both been blown away by the by the support that um, we've had since the the letters kind of gone viral, really. Well, we might be able to give you another treat now because, as you know, we've got Emil Emil there, another Liverpool legend. I don't know, Emil, if you've got any advice about conquering nerves of the new. You must have experienced that yourself in your time. Yeah. Hi, Lewis. You okay? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, I think it's more on the same line as what Jurgen was saying. I think we we all we all have nerves because we care for what we're actually going to do, and it's great that he's going into the secondary school and and actually caring about it and having the nerves. It's about channeling, channeling that nerves and and turning it into a positive to to do well at school. I'm sure it's going to be a great school, and I'm sure you're going to be fantastic at school, mate. Thank you. <laughs> um, Mum, I think you've we've got something, haven't we, for for Lewis? Do you have it there? He's got it on. Oh, he's got oh, it on. Oh, great! Oh, let's have it, yeah. Lewis. Would you like? There we go. There's a there's a Liverpool shirt for you. Do you want to just um, model that for us? You can um, you can turn around. around. What does it say on the back? Um, it's, there's nothing on the back. It's oh, plain we on need the back. to we need to get it printed for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We've taken the Zoom call approach, haven't we? Just done the bit you can see. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get the. Um, we'll, we'll get that sorted for you. Yeah. What what number do you want on the back, Lewis? Uh, I like. P I would like eleven. Eleven. Okay. Okay. We'll we'll get the number eleven uh, put on the yeah. back. Uh, fantastic. You don't stuff. have to write us a letter. We've got the message. <laughs> We're all good. And what have you done with the letter, Lewis? Um. Well. The day it came, uh, I put it in a frame, so it's like ah. in a frame. Well, that will be inspiring for you, I'm sure, for, for years to come. And everybody will want to have a look at it and you can show it off. It's absolutely <laughs> terrific. It's good to see you. And good on Jürgen Klopp and good on Emil Heskey as yeah. well. Uh, it's a fantastic project, player for player, um, and, and just helping that transition. Because, you know, as Kate was saying, you know, we think of footballers... They're paid a lot of money, they get a lot of adulation. Uh, a lot of people don't realise, actually, it can be tough yeah. for some of them just to and find sometimes a sometimes the bigger the adulation career. at the time, the more they think it'll probably go on forever and it, yeah. it hits harder when it stops. So.